Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA uh, traits of a uh, bell beaker from Britain. So this is a bell beaker from England. Let's see its haplogroups. Okay, so its Y DNA seems to be R1B. Yeah, that looks like R1B. I'm not really sure what um, precise subclade that is. It's R1B. 1B, 1B, 1A, I don't know. So it's some kind of R1B. And mitochondrial DNA seems to be X2B. Very exotic looking. I don't know where that's most typical. Okay, so let's get on to stuff like phenotype. This guy's phenotype is that he's got blue eyes with an amber center. Uh, followed that by green eyes, followed that by blue eyes in terms of the likelihood. So it's blue with neighbor center, followed by green, followed by blue. Probably not hazel, and uh, most definitely not light or dark brown. Quite light in terms of eye color. Uh, looks like dark blonde hair <coughs> and uh, other hair colors. Not as not as um, high of a likelihood. And it looks like light or fair skin is this individual's phenotype, right? And this kind of this kind of eye color is uh, an eye color he might have had. Uh, I did some googling and some imagination and whatever, and I came up with a phenotype which I think this individual might have had, uh, Mr. Hank Schrader from Breaking Bad, and he appeared on Barry Call Saul as well. So uh, this might be what this individual looked like, maybe with hair, maybe without hair. Maybe with a little bit of a beard. I don't know. I'm not sure what kind of fashion sense this bell beaker had. Uh, when it comes to the polygenic risk scores, we're going to check that now. It looks like he's got average score for schizophrenia. It looks like they got very low score for type 2 diabetes. Very much below average score for type 2 diabetes. And average score for Alzheimer's. Very interesting, right? So he's got GG and Combs Valmet variation, meaning Val Val genotype. This guy is a warrior or warrior in Compt, but warrior in MAOA. Would you look at that? So these two cancel out uh, altogether. He's probably intermediate between warrior and warrior. Uh, not exactly quickest breakdown of dopamine. Uh, is it breakdown? Yeah, it's, it's breakdown. Not exactly the quickest breakdown of dopamine. Uh, not exactly the highest concentration of dopamine in the system just kind of intermediate average. <laughs> All right, he's got one derived no gold or no than the rd 2 Pro, Pro, so intermediate number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. Uh, he does not have the A1 allele and TAC1, very interesting, typical genotype for a human. Once again, he does, probably doesn't have stuff like ADHD and alcoholism, but uh, then again, in the past, I think very few people had these types of issues. It's more of a modern phenomenon when people are just overwhelmed with technology and overwhelmed with whew, just stressors and stimuli that would develop stuff like ADHD. I don't think it's I don't think it's a very natural illness actually, but that's just my opinion. You might disagree with me in the comments. I don't care. Um, this individual does not have long form 5 HTTLPR, so he's got short form 5 HTTLPR. Like most of you guys, he has slight problems transport, transporting serotonin. Short form 5 HTTLPR, slightly higher roads of depression, stuff like that. However, not that big of a deal because pretty much everybody has it, aside from me. <laughs> uh, this individual does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Very interesting once again. Uh, this is another case of a Bronze Age individual who is European, Northern European, but does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. <laughs> for the empathy gene, OXTR, it looks like this individual has two variants for lower levels of empathy here, <coughs> heterozygous genotype here, and two variants for higher levels of empathy here, so that's kind of interesting. <laughs> I can't really say if he's a um, sociopath or an empath and, unless we get his genotype here, and that's not on the file, unfortunately. For diabetes, um, genotype associated with lower risk of type 2 diabetes, all right, that plays a part in the calculation. Uh, there's got to be some other genotypes he has that are not shown on the screen that play a part. And it looks like he's got lower risk of various autoimmune disorders and type 1 diabetes, and he doesn't have type 1 diabetes either. No type 1 or type 2 diabetes for him, very good. 
he is not a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation, doesn't have hemochromatosis, although it would be better if we knew his genotype here and here as well. For Alzheimer's, he does not have any APOE2 alleles, so no, no risk variance for Alzheimer's in APOE. Uh, and actually, he's got these genotypes here, which slightly decrease the risk of Alzheimer's. Wait, excuse me. This genotype slightly increases the risk of Alzheimer's. All right. All right. He does not have the G allele here, which would protect against myopia. But that doesn't really matter all that much, because very few people do. Uh, oh, wait a second. This is, this is nice. Oh, this is nice. Okay. Look what I found. So, he's actually heterozygous for one of the micro-P mutations. That's crazy. Well, you know, um, I think to actually have the, the trait, you need to have two alleles. You can't be heterozygous. Like, if you're just heterozygous, it's probably not going to show up. I think, it's a, I think it's a recessive trait, isn't it? So, to have the phenotype, you know, the micro-P phenotype, you probably need to have two alleles here, not just one, but he's heterozygous. Yeah, interesting. He's a carrier. A uh, mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter than endurance athlete. No fat gene variants in FTOs, RS-99, 609, not obese. Does not have photic, photic sneeze reflex. He's got one variant for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. Uh, when it comes to EZAR, absolutely no East Asian EZAR. Very typical European genotype in EZAR. Uh, he's also not an Asian flusher, very good. Um, it looks like slightly more likely to gain weight if taken Zyprexa. And average odds of meth-induced psychosis, alright. And he's also not a carrier of Occutaneous Albinism Type 1B, not albino. And no risk variance for familiar Mediterranean fever. Uh, should I even talk about this MTHFR stuff? Yeah, okay. So he's got 10 to 20 percent efficiency in processing folic acid. Uh, he's got some problems processing folic acid, it seems like, uh, and that leads to various mental health. Com com just not even mental. It's like from autism to schizophrenia to coronary heart disease to like obesity. There's all kinds of complications that come with this genotype. So it's not a very good genotype to have. Um, and it looks like he has a genotype that is, that's associated with common or slightly higher blood pressure. Average or slightly higher than average blood pressure. Alright, now we're gonna go ahead and check out his um, ethnic calculator results. Alright, and with my calculator he is closest to actually Mirians from uh, Iron Age Volga. Very interesting. Followed by that actually is Bell Beakers from Britain. Good. Uh, followed by that is global or amphora people, followed by that is Bulgarians and final beaker people. Very interesting. That's kind of crazy. So, um, you can see the distance to medians and bell beakers are kind of, kind of the same distance, right? It's 3.6 versus 3.7. So it's about as close to medians as it is to bell beakers from Britain. Let's uh, see if um, single mode will clear things up for us. Okay, this is not clearing things up for us. How about we reduce that to five populations? All right, now we're getting this kind of result where it's mostly funnel beaker plus a little bit of Hash Firuz, Bronze Age from Iran, uh, plus a little bit of Pinarbasi Hunter Gatherer, plus a little bit of South Asian and even Polynesian. Uh, that's kind of crazy, I don't know. But, but then again, um, Keep in mind that this calculation was done with 454 SNPs. So it's gonna be a little bit crazy. What about... And so was the, the reference populations that I'm using here uh, to model. They were also done with the same calculation. So uh, it's even double crazy. It's even more crazy than you think because uh, the reference populations have been, have been done. All of this was done using the same calculation, right? Uh, with like 500 SNPs each, or a little bit more for some of them, but some of these are really low quality. Alright, what about if we reduce this to three populations? Okay, with three populations reduced, it seems to be getting more as a mixture of funnel beaker, plus a little bit of Hispanic, plus a little bit of uh, Gleb Svetoslavovich. 
very interesting. Uh, now, yeah, I do actually have a Hispanic category on my um, in my calculator. There is a reference group for Hispanics. Very cool. Okay, what about four populations and this column to 0 0.5? Oh, that's awful. Assyrian plus Merian from Iron Age Volga plus Russian plus Hashfiruz once again. What if you remove this, this this column? Okay, now it's Funnel Beaker plus Hashfiruz plus Polynesian plus Algerian. So it seems that it seems that my calculator is thinking this uh, Bell Beaker is a lot more southern and a lot more Mediterranean than he really is. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks for watching until the end. Check out my trade predictor. I do suggest you buy it. There's a lot more stuff here than just ethnic calculator. There's polygenic risk scores, phenotype, and all of this stuff. Um, and I do want to remind you that you can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Goodbye.